In this video, we will walk through some of the troubleshooting tips for debugging F5 service insertion in APIC. Now, as we can see, we go to the deployed service graphs and we see a fail to apply state. We check the false for this particular graph and we see two false have been raised. If we click on the fault, it gives us a detailed explanation of what could be the issue in this case. If we copy the affected object and go to a site with Zori and paste it in the class or DN, we can see more information about the issue. In this case, it says missing BD. We now go to the second fault raised and we do the similar exercise. This fault seems to have more explanation than the other fault of what the issue might be and where it might belong. It looks like it's ADC in interface external. So we take the affected object, we go to the Visore site, and we run the query. It gives us more information as well as it tells us that the config state of this graph is failed to apply. To fix the issue, we go to the device selection policy, do the ADC and the external, and we see that it does not have any bridge domain, so we assign it a bridge domain. We go back to the graph inst and we see it is in applied state. We go to the false. We see one of the faults has cleared immediately and the second fault is still in clearing state. We see it's gone to retaining state, which means that it's cleared. If we take the affected object and go back to the Visore site, we see the config issues have been resolved and the graph is back in applied state. Next, we will troubleshoot an issue in one of the deployed devices, the F5. We see that there is one fault. Once we double click on the fault, we see more information regarding the fault. In this case, we see an error of network virtual server is not supported. We can see more information in the APIC debug.logs. We see a fault has been generated in the debug log that tells us about the network virtual server not supported. We go back to the APIC and try to fix the issue. We modify the L4 to L7 service parameters for the particular parameter that is giving the issue. In this case, it would be the listener. And the mask would be that of a network server. We go back to the deployed devices and see the faults. We see the fault has changed from raised to raised clearing and then to retaining. We can even debug by looking at the big IP LTM logs. The directory would be var log and the file would be LTM. In this file, any big IP related debugs is what is available. So if there are any issues that cannot be resolved by looking at APIC, UI, or the debug.log, then the next step would be to look at the big IP LTM logs. Another way to debug is by looking at the posts. If you see a fault, say, in the logical device cluster, and the fault is of such a nature that it is not very clear, like in this case, we have L4 to L7 device configuration is invalid, but we do not have more details about it. What we could do is download the post by right-clicking on that object.
and then we view the XML file, we see what the error is talking about. We can see that the fault has a description of configuration is invalid due to lif has no relation to SIF. This information is not clear for us to debug further, but in order to understand more on what they are saying, we can look at the post. We search for something known as lif, and we see the object and see that they are talking about the external and internal interfaces. We see that the external interface has a field that the internal interface does not. We go back to the APIC and we view the external interface to see that it does have a concrete interface defined. We go to the internal interface and see that it's missing the concrete interface. So we add it by using a post. We post the interface information and then we see it has been added to the interface internal. We go back to the logical device clusters to see the faults. We see that the fault has changed from raised to raised and clearing and finally to retaining. This concludes our session. Thank you.